As Africa's capital markets continue to evolve and expand, investment managers will have the opportunity to construct ever more specialized portfolios. Investec Asset Management recently launched an African Credit Opportunities Fund to complement its existing African suite of funds. Portfolio manager Stephen Loebscher joins us in Cape Town to discuss what the funding plans are in terms of the fund. And of course, uh, Warren, before we go to Stephen, let's just get your scenario setting. Yes, that's right, Bruno. We just obviously wanted to frame the context of the discussion with Stephen a little bit better th this evening. And I've just got a few graphs just to talk about uh, what's been happening now as Investec moves into a fixed interest uh, portfolio. There's a couple of things they need to think about when they manage the portfolio. And one of them uh, is, is equities. <laughs> no, uh, it's actually Forex. But just to give you an idea here of how uh, African equities have performed over the last uh, few, uh, well, it's about the last 12 years. You can see the run-up of the Emerging Markets Index in red, um, sorry, the MSCI Africa Index in red uh, against some of the emerging markets. And you can see after a steep fall, they haven't quite recovered, but last year was a, a fairly good year. We saw some of the African indices returning about 40%. If we just go to the next uh, slide, which is more applicable to what uh, we're going to be talking about today with Stephen, is how to manage the forex risk across different African currencies. And here you can see the African 10, uh, and it's, it's basically a basket of 10 African currencies. And you can see how it's performed relative to the US dollar in the black line and the euro in the red line. So it's come off a little bit in the last four years. You can still see it's about, almost about even, but still below uh, the, the 100 index threshold. And then this is something that's really inter interesting from uh, an offshore investor's perspective is what we call the carry trade. And the next slide will show us uh, just some of the money, how the guys are making money, taking uh, the very low interest rate environment in the developed markets and then investing those into higher yielding instruments uh, on the African continent. But there's obviously the plus and the minus. What you can make on the swings, you can lose on the roundabouts. Because if we look here, this is over a four month um, period. You can see in the light gray some of the gains that they've made in the, uh, in the forex market. Sorry, the light gray is the uh, returns they've made investing in fixed interest which is this top line along here. And then you can see with regards to some of the countries like Malawi saw the big currency depreciation, uh, you, can, you can lose a lot of value there. So that's just against, this particular one is against the US dollar. The next slide's against the euro and that's obviously the two primary geographies that guys, that investment managers are borrowing uh, money from to go and invest uh, offshore. So I think that frames it, uh, Bronwyn. So we're going to be interested in hearing from Stephen exactly what they're going to be investing in in, in the African Opportunities Fund. Well, Stephen, I know you've been doing a lot of on-the-ground research, given the last time I saw you was in Tunis, in Tunisia, uh, at an African Development Bank conference. So where do we, we go in terms of the, the rationale for the Africa Credit Opportunities Fund? Perhaps just start there. Thanks, Bronwyn. I think it's good to give a bit of introduction and set the scene. Warren's done a fantastic job in discussing the various asset classes. But really, if we take it back to the basics and the starting point, South African institutional investors have a 5% allowance to invest into Africa. So for the last 10 years, South African investors have had an absolutely fantastic ride. Equities have done brilliantly. South African bonds have done brilliantly. And South African properties have done brilliantly. But it starts to f it's starting to feel as though we're at the top of those various markets. And South African investors are saying, what about that 5% allowance into Africa? And they, like the rest of the world, is hearing this fantastic story about investing into Africa. But the question is where and how? Warren's shown you the graph of African equities. And last year, African equities did close to 50% in RAND. And I think this year, they're probably up 10, 15% in RAND. And that's a fantastic swing in one year. But if you look at the back of that graph from the peaks in 2007, I think they dropped 50 or 60% in a year as well. And that type of hairy ride, I'm not too sure everyone is keen on. And that's where we really came up with the idea of putting up, putting an Investec Africa Credit Opportunities Fund together. Uh, just so just to get to, uh, a lot of Stephen, to throw a couple of numbers in there again, just to, in terms of context for, for the audience, you're looking to raise $350 million and you've got $60 million already in the bag from two uh, funders. Is that correct? Two anchor That's funders. That's absolutely correct. Yes, yeah, so the two anchor funders are CDC, it's the British Development Agency, and FMO, the Dutch Development Agency, and they've come in as early investors. 
but we've really tried and tested the investment strategy over the last two and a half years. So we've invested over $150 million in African equity in our other funds. So, so back to where I was, was to say African, um, African credit really gives investors exposure to different side lower risk opportunity in Africa. So we put together a portfolio of high yielding credit opportunities and the aim is to try and give equity like returns but removing some of that volatility and I can describe the strategy a bit further as, as we go into it. Stephen, I think just for the, the purposes of our uh, audience, and, and obviously we're very familiar on the show with some of the challenges that the equity managers face in investing in Africa with regards to, first of all, the universe, and second of all, liquidity uh, constraints. Just tell us exactly what type of uh, debt instruments you're going to be investing in in this fund. Sure. So really, um, when we call it an opportunities fund, the idea is to be very opportunistic. When, when building a portfolio in Africa, there are enough limitations and you don't want to have a limited mandate. So we'll be investing the likes of high quality loans originated by banks to African companies. Uh, we'll also be investing in bonds and convert convertible bonds. And from time to time, we'll find derivative exposure in the likes of CLNs. And there are other special situations where we would find promissory notes or structured notes. So it's a very open, broad mandate, which gives us our exposure. Just to go, just to go into that a little bit more, Stephen, in terms of the, uh, you know, we talked off air this morning around well, what exactly the fund invests in. Uh, you, you, you were telling me there's, no, there's not going to be any government debt in this portfolio. It's going to be very focused on, on private sector debt. In fact, you, you don't expect to invest much in state-owned enterprises either. So just in terms of that set, what are the sorts of companies that you're seeing uh, and what sort of sectors are they operating in on the continent? And, and then further to that, sure. let's throw in the geographies as well. Okay, absolutely. Well, maybe I can just touch on it. One of the limitations that our colleagues in the equity world experience in Africa is that not everything is listed. So there's actually a very small percentage of entities or companies listed in Africa, and that's the beauty of credit. We can provide debt to big listed African companies. So that's part of the strategy is to target uh, the listed market dominant companies. And then we can also play in the unlisted space. And, and the unlisted space is very broad. It can range from infrastructure projects. It can be um, property projects and the full range. So do you, do you have the a listed split? side do and you, the unlisted side. Do you have a set split between the listed and the unlisted space that's already defined? N no, not really. As I said, we're very opportunistic and it's bottom up. It really depends on what's coming along. So, so I would say give or take, let's call it 50-50 at this point uh, as a starting point, but we'll see how the market develops. I think if we look at our, if we look at our current portfolio, it would probably be um, biased. It would probably be 50-50 in terms of giving um, credit to listed entities and unlisted entities. So really we doubling the universe um, in the credit space be, being, by being able to play in listed and unlisted. So that gives you a, a first sense. And some of the exciting stories that I discussed with Warren this morning was really around themes or sectors. So the first one and the one that we love most is the, the African consumer. That's the story. That's the story that will prevail throughout. And that could be FMCG businesses, brewers. Um, we would almost put telecoms into that on, uh, on the consumption side. The other sector would be property or real estate, and we're starting to see the real pioneers go into Africa and doing very good things in the, the property space, so that's a theme we would be backing. The next big ones would be financial services, so banks or other non-banks, and what we've always found through our experience is banks don't give other banks money, or they don't give their competitors money, both for competitive reasons and for risk reasons. And as institutional investors, we've always found fantastic investment opportunities in providing African banks or financial institutions with capital. And then the big story and the story that everyone gets so excited about is resources in Africa. And we feel Africa is way more than resources, but that's always the tailwind that is there that's sort of helping the markets develop. So we are seeing massive companies of anywhere from two billion dollars in enterprise value up to ten billion dollars in Africa that need debt capital and we're providing them with debt capital. The I, I know I know Warren's I've wanting to jump in. Briefly. Warren's wanting to jump in, but I, I want a little more clarity on those geographies. 
geographies. Okay, so back to geographies, Warren and I, and I discussed it this morning. They're obviously the four pillars um, in, in Africa, north, south, east, west. So on the western side, we've got Ghana and Nigeria, and those are the exciting stories, the rising stars, and a good 30, 40% of the portfolio will probably come out of West Africa. Um, and then we would look at sort of the smaller countries on the west side. On the eastern side, you have Kenya as the main powerhouse and some of the um, exciting markets that form part of the East African community. So Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda, we'd see a good portion there. And then on the southern side, obviously South Africa is the main driving force. In this portfolio, South Africa is not a focus. We've got other strategies that are focusing on South Africa. But we'd say the periphery countries in SADC, um, Zambia has been a great destination and we've got a few good portfolio investments in Zambia. And then Zimbabwe, um, being starved of capital, we're able to also find special situations where we can invest in Zimbabwe, uh, where we get guarantees and where we're able, able to get rid of some of the country risk. So I'd say those are the pillars and the cornerstones. North Africa has been very difficult at this stage. And I mean, your big, your big forces in North Africa would be Morocco and Egypt. And I th we're probably going to go in and start building a North Africa pipeline because we sense, we're starting to sense that those countries will get through their political issues in the, in the, the coming years. Stephen, just to talk a little bit about uh, you know, the, the, the capital requirements of some of the businesses in Africa. We've seen some fantastic business models um, opening up across the continent. Some of them are from South African banks, but a lot of them are from local banks that have, that, that have start to, started to build a real presence on the, on the continent. Just what is the difference between your fund and a multinational uh, finance institution uh, like some of your funders, as I understand it, are classified as? Uh, where do you sort of draw the line between uh, what a bank, a global bank, would be doing uh, lending to some of these other uh, financial institutions? Um, and, and being a, a credit fund like you, like you are at the moment? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. And I would say the key difference is we're way more opportunistic. And our main aim is risk adjusted returns. So we're looking for the highest yields with the lowest risk. And we're a lot more nimble, we're faster moving, and we're able to play both in the loan space and the listed bond tradable space. So a typical bank, let's say our big four South African banks that are doing a fantastic job in Africa now, they don't get involved in the listed tradable bond space. And we see great opportunities there. So they won't buy something um, uh, low, sell it high, and lock in those capital gains. They're very much about lending, extending balance sheets. And they're also far more concerned about getting some of the periphery business, such as the forex or the trading lines. So, and we, we're not too concerned uh, about those pieces of business. We just want to buy a very good business or, or, or extend credit, put it into a portfolio and get the best risk adjusted Stephen, returns. So I, wa I want to focus. Would be All right, sorry, finish, finish with that. And we're running out of time. So I tend to jump the gun. Just finish with that thought and then I've got one more question for you. Yeah, so, so the difference is, is we're more opportunistic and we're more concerned about absolute return versus risk. Just on that unlisted space, that's got to take a hell of a lot of work on the ground, and, and I know you travel extensively, to really pull out the, the gems in the unlisted space. Uh, how are you going about that process? Yeah, Bronwyn, that's, I mean, it's absolutely true. Af Africa's a great opportunity, but it is hard work finding it and uncovering, really finding the, the jewels in the dust or the gems in the dust. And fortunately, I've got some colleagues in the equity space, the private equity space, and ourselves as a firm that has been there and been laying those railway lines a lot longer than we have. So we're leveraging off a team that's probably 30 people in size. So we're really using the full team to originate opportunities and understand the companies and the situations and the opportunities. So we're really um, riding off on the tail skirts of some of our colleagues. And, and then uh, we're adding that on the ground due diligence ourselves. So I think in the last five years, we've probably done 200 or 300 company or country visits as a team. And we've probably seen companies over a thousand times in that time. So there's, there's a big institutional um, 
asset there of knowledge. Stephen, just uh, an important question and one I wanted to make sure we, we had uh, asked you before we go is around the managing of the forex risk. Uh, you, you mentioned your strategy this morning today. I wanted to just say, uh, ask you for the benefit of our audience, you know, what, what, is, what is your policy or your approach with regards to managing the various currencies that you might be investing in? Yeah, Warren, going back to your first question, what we're trying to give investors is a taste of Africa, but taking out some of the bigger risks. And currency risk is the big one. So we're doing all of our lending in US dollars. We're getting a spread over LIBOR, and we've been able to isolate that. So really, it's a dollar strategy. So some of, some of the investors are going into Africa for the first time. We don't want to add currency or FX risk to that. So this is a dollar proposition.